Yo, 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 it's your boy, Big Mike Raider. We're here in the belly of the beast at day six of the 30 Days 30 Prospects, where today we're covering Washington left tackle Troy Faltanu. Let's jump into it. Have they ever seen another like me living giant type step in your house above my head on your silly climb out of the bottomless pit to let the truth slip and slide off my tongue and swine dive off my lips no longer hold on I'm tired of applying the grip forget the fancy shiny rappers I'm supplying the gifts I feel it's only right to tell you that I'm going in yo what's going on it's your boy Big Mike Raider writer and contributor for Planet Raiders and I got a show for you today man it chock full of information I'm going to convince you guys that Troy Fatanu can be one of the guys that we pick and, and package him up with a Michael Penix Jr. I'm going to get straight to the punch with this one. Guys, I think that he would be perfect in package with uh, Michael Penix Jr. if we pick Michael Penix Jr. at number 13. I say that we can move back up to the first round and pick up Fatanu. Um, you know, I know he plays left tackle, but this guy's very versatile. I think that he can possibly, you know, we can kick the tires and at him trying to play right tackle. If that doesn't work, we move him to uh, right guard. He's played guard before. I think that we can make this happen. I think that we can package the two up and get the two in the first round. And uh, I'll give you the reasons why I believe that this is a good move. Um, I'm going to go over draft positioning with him uh, re regarding him. Uh, it's going to be, uh, you know, um, I saw that he's going as high as probably around where we pick at 13. Um, I've seen uh, at, at times his stock drop a little bit to the later of the first round. Um, but I did a mock draft and I'm going to show you what I did in the mock draft. I, I did a trade to move back into the first round. I want to hear what you guys think about it. I'm going to show it to you. Uh, we're going to go over some PFF grades. And then lastly. What we're going to do is that we're going to do that that film breakdown that, that you guys know and love so much. We're going to do a film breakdown on Troy Faltanu and, and, and show his physical attributes and show uh, his football IQ and what he brings to the table. Now, you guys know how we do it when it's uh, a film breakdown. I kind of go over his strengths and weaknesses real quick. And then we talk about additionals, and then we jump into the film breakdown impromptu, live, uh, not necessarily live, but no filter, no no editing, nothing, just a reaction in real time. So before we do that, before we get into any of this, I need for you guys to like the thumb, hit the sub, and share with your folks. Guys, let's jump into this physical, physical player, Troy Fotanu. Um, Hey, Nevada, Henderson, Nevada, uh, um, uh, born and raised. So, you know, coming back to the Raiders will be a full circle deal for him. Might be a level of, of motivation to come back and play for the hometown. Uh, 6'5", 315 pounds, former three-star athlete. You guys know how I feel about those three-star athletes. They, they matriculate through the college ranks and they find themselves climbing up. And by the time they get to the draft day, and they, they find themselves, uh, when it's all said and done, being those elite players that we all love. Uh, you think of a Patrick Mahomes. You think of a, an Aaron Donald. These are guys that were three-star athletes coming out of high school, and they moved their way up to becoming household names. So and am I saying that uh, Fatanu was going to be a household name? I don't know that. We don't know that. But, you know, a guy who is a three-star athlete has that, that pedigree and also a chip on the shoulder that he's not getting the, 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 the recognition and uh, the clout that the four and five star guys are getting. So um, a little bit about Fatanu. Once he got to college, he, he got there in 2019. He red shirted in 2019 In 2020. Um, he sat out and then he, so he sat out for two seasons and 2021 he, and uh, through two, 2023 is where he, uh made a name for himself and over 2000 snaps he only gave up three sacks um in um in those three years he was the 2022 second team all pack 12 at his position and a 2023 first team all pack 12 and 20 uh like i said in 2023 also he was third team all american 
at the uh, left tackle position. So this guy has honors uh, behind his name. He, this guy has shown that he uh, can be a special player at the left tackle position. Um, but my case for him is, hey, we'll put you anywhere where, where it's fit, where it's fit, right? So, hey, I'll get into it a little bit later. Maybe we can consider moving him to left tackle. I'll get into that a little bit later, but let me continue, right? His strengths, um, very physical, um, imposing size and strength, very strong, uh, very physical, um, has a really long reach, has a, a wingspan that is is is, is like in, indicative if you were like somebody way taller than what he is. He's six four, six five, um, but he's he his wingspan dictates that he's a little bit taller, so he gets that good reach on a defender and um, he can uh, prevent you from getting your hands on you as a, from a defender's perspective. Now, he's also what I like to consider a dancing bear. Great footwork, uh, very light on his feet, agile, um, you know, explosive down the field in that second level, uh, locates a, um, a defender and, and attempts to put him on his back. So that this is a guy that, uh, that has a tenacious demeanor, High football IQ, uh, perfect mix of aggression and surgical like strikes. Excuse me. So a complete tactician at the offensive line position, wherever you put him. Now, some of the weaknesses that we do have to talk about is kind of concerning. I will say that he's not great in pass protect, uh, run protection. I'm sorry. Not great at run protection. Um, and, you know, I will kind of defend him uh, about that. And I'll show you in the PFF grades that his run protection isn't great because, well, it wasn't required for him to do so. One of, out of every four plays almost um, was a run play at the University of Washington. They were very pass heavy, and um, he didn't have to um, be a master at um, sharpening that type of skill, right? That's one thing. Uh, he gets a little bit out of control. Uh, he he uh, he's over Sometimes he gets over aggressive with a strike. And then he gets a little bit out of control and uh, in doing so, he kind of bites on more complex uh, pass rushers when they give you a double move or a nice little shake. He'll kind of he'll kind of react to that a little bit and um, and and bite on it and, and get burnt by doing so. So those are the things that I would say that those are the, the, the weaknesses from him. Uh, all in all, this guy is a very physical guy sharpening the tools and looking at film and getting what guys like Max Crosby to kind of sharpen those skills will only make him better, uh, especially if we consider moving him to right tackle. Now, you know, Max Crosby is going to be on that left side. He's going to be going one-on-one -on -one a lot of times, especially in training camp with the rookie. So, you know, when you, we saw this with Michael Mayer at tight end where they put Max Crosby on Michael Mayer, Michael Mayer wasn't a great blocker at the beginning of the season, but by the end of the season, he was, a pretty decent uh, blocking tight end. So even more so where you could put a Max Crosby on uh, Faltanu if we do move him to uh, right tackle and kind of, you know, break him in a little bit and get him sharpened up. This is a perfect place for him to kind of sharpen those skills and get placed in a situation where he might be a little bit uncomfortable and thrive when it's all said and done. Um, Another thing that I do want to speak on is the possibility of moving him to left tackle. Um, and like I said, guys, this is uh, this is the, the caveat with this is if we do pick up a Michael Penix Jr. at number 13, I would like the pairing of, of somebody that he's familiar with and somebody that he's been uh, seen success with that that left slash right tackle. Well, he's been mostly left tackle, but your best lineman and your quarterback being packaged together at the pros, you don't have to worry about a a uh, a, a a stunt in growth or or you know waiting for you know the growth to be there. It would be um, I, I would say that the the success would be kind of uh, I wouldn't say immediate, but it'll speed up the process. Kind of having a guy that you've you know kind of that you could trust and have worked with over the, the last couple of years. So. Like I said, it has to be uh, the caveat that we get Michael Penix Jr. Now, if we do move him to left tackle, right, 
We have a guy named Colton Miller who has played right tackle his junior and his, I'm sorry, his sophomore and freshman year at UCLA. Um, he hasn't played it in the pros yet, but he's shown that he can do so. Now, these next two years, uh, Colton Miller is due $12.5 million a year for the next two years. Um, now, he can get a payday uh, within the top 10 um, of, of left tackles. Might be, you know, upwards of $15 million. Uh, he is a top 10 tackle in the league. He can get it probably, if I were to guess, probably about $15, $16 million. But if he does move to the right tackle position, you're presented a whole new market, right? And if he does well, uh, protecting that right side with the left-handed quarterback, he can show more versatility as a right tackle and a left tackle when it's time for him to get to the negotiating table in two years. And when he gets there, he can say that, hey, you could pay me as a maybe a top five right tackle, which will be upwards of 15 million. Currently at this time in two years, you know how that goes. You know, the prices go up. He could go up to about, I'm throwing random numbers out there, um, but the market for like a top five uh, right tackle is around uh, like 12 to 15 million. So at this point right now, it goes up. He could go to the negotiating table, say, I am a right tackle, one of the top right tackles, and also one of the top left tackles in this league. The versatility alone dictates to pay me around 18 to 20 million. So for him, it might be advantageous for him to, to move to that right tackle position and be um, considered a very uh, uh, versatile uh, tackle that can go both, both sides and get himself a big payday when it's time for him to get paid. Now, it's all hypotheticals, um, and, and, you know, this is unlikely to happen, right? Everybody knows it's unlikely to happen, but I'm trying to sell you guys, you know, that we have to start either A, you know, try this guy out at uh, Fatanu at the right tackle position, or find, locate the new left tackle position of the future, put him in there, and then have Colton Miller for those next two years, prove that he's a versatile guy and get himself a payday, maybe stay with us or go walking with those with, you know, with that under his belt and ask for a huge payday elsewhere. So it's advantageous on both ends for 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 it to happen. Now, hey, it's not going to happen. It's probably not going to happen. But it's something to throw out there and for people to think about. I got some more evidence that kind of backs that up. Um, but. Uh, before we do that, here's another possibility that we got to really think of. Just imagine, you know, we get Fautanu in the late first. We can also possibly think about putting him at right guard. He has played the guard position as well. So, you know, that is also in a, like attributes to, you know, his level of versatility is that we have options if we do pick him in the late first and that we can get him on the right side, the left side of tackle, or we can put him at right guard. Now you guys know that right guard has been uh, one of those positions that we've been looking for somebody to replace there. Um, I think that with his, uh, his size, he's about six, five and three fifteen. He's not the typical uh, prototype size tackle, even though he has the reach to be one and to be successful in this league. But he is the prototype uh, size-wise and, and intangibles to be that special type of guard. So if you're telling me we can locate possibly our right guard of the future and our quarterback in the future in round one and we can knock that one out in one fell swoop, I would be okay with that. So um, let me know what you guys think about that. Uh, I know it's a lot to, 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 to kind of digest. It's my uh it's possibilities that are highly unlikely but you know considering the circumstances considering that uh if we pick Michael Penix Jr. at 13 I want to pair him with somebody that he's comfortable with and then he has some familiarity with and uh move on from there and strengthen his team on that offensive line at the same time so um further uh evidence from that right is I did a uh, I did a mock draft, and this is what I did right here. I'm gonna show you guys right here. So 
this is the trade I got to move up to get Michael Penix Jr. So I'm not going to lie to you guys. I think uh, when it's all said and done, Michael Penix Jr. will be at that number 13 spot, and Troy Fontana will be somewhere around that 28. Now, I traded with the Buffalo Bills. I gave up what, is, what it says right here, a 2024 77th overall, so that's third round, and a sixth round pick of 2024, a 2025 um, – uh, round two and a 2025 20, round four and Byron Young to move back into 28. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. That's a lot. But if that means you're locating the quarterback you want, that would be the good move, right? Now, I will say this. I will say this, guys. If it's the other way around and we pick Michael Penix at 13, we're not going to have to give nearly enough, uh, nearly that much away to get a uh, Fatanu at 28 if that if those roles were flipped. So um but that is kind of a barometer of where what it would take according to PFF what it would take to kind of move back into the first I think is worth it uh especially if you're going to locate the quarterback or locate another guy who's versatile on your offensive line. I think I think it is definitely um uh is definitely a good move for us um, and, and to locate that guy that can solidify the offense. So let me know what you think about that one as well. So let's look at draft positioning for Fatanu, right? Overall rank uh, is 24.2. That's his average rank of all those teams that are uh, listed right there where they kind of have him drafted. Um, he's the sixth best tackle in this uh, class according to this rank. Um, note that PFF has him ranked at 13, um, but you have plenty of people who say that he is around 22, uh, the 22 overall pick, the 25 overall pick. CBS and Pro Football Network have him as low as 40 to 49. So uh, the overall rank is 24.2. Uh, so, you know, in that 24 to 28 range seems like the sweet spot to get a Fatanu. Um, and if we have to move back in the first to, to locate a guy who's versatile and brings those physical skills, I'm all for it. Um, with all that, guys, what do you guys think about the draft positioning? What do you guys think about what I just uh, presented to you guys, my uh, proposal uh, draft, trade, all that stuff, my proposal to either move them to either left or right tackle or even to the guard position. You guys let me know. I want to hear it. I know I'm going to hear a lot of people, oh, you're out of your mind, this and that, blah, blah, blah. Cool. Let me know. I don't care. But, you know, this is what, you know, this is what we're doing. We got to possibly look at possibility we got to look at possibilities to strengthen this offensive line and if we have to move back up into the first round to get a guy who has the physical skills to move at either side of 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 of, of the ball as far as the, the 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 line goes offensive line i mean left tackle right tackle even guard i say we do it but guys you guys let me know what you think about it um and let's get to his uh Shoot, you know what, guys? Let's jump into this uh, film breakdown right here. Let me slow it down. It started. I didn't want it to start. There you go. So here we go, guys. So we're looking at the right, uh, the right side of the screen. We're looking at number fifty-five, Fotanu. He's our left tackle, but he is on our right side of the screen, and. We're going to see what he does right here, man. Uh, I, I like his footwork. His, his IQ always shows in every play that I've broken down with him. Um, let's let this ride out, right? Good footwork. As you can see, <clears throat> pad level's decent. Uh, he already has the reach right there. Uh, he's using that that long reach to uh, prevent the defense, the defender from getting hands on him. And that's a good look so far, right? Pocket looks clean. Um, let's continue. And that's what I wanted to show you guys, the fact that number 45 tried to outside move and then tried to, you know, kind of inside gap him. But 
that's the the special uh stuff that Fatanu brings is his almost just improvising almost um and doing a little bit of unconventional stuff to kind of put himself in the right position and his elite footwork allows him to do something like spin back in instead of you know kind of taking uh a step in rather than taking a step in as traditional tackles would do he's like a dancing bear like i said he did like a spin and got back into position and was able to uh solidify this block right there so there you go put himself in a perfect position to get back and uh recover and get uh get right and mirror number 45 so here's the next one right here number 55 we got a guy on his outside shade in a five technique uh right here on the left hand side of the screen we're looking at number 55 guys let's check it out so there you go and right here he sees that number one isn't coming in he, he first uh, anticipates that number one is going to come in and he was going to be blocking number one, where he realized that, that nobody was uh, coming in and, and nobody for him to mirror. He looked for work. That's what I call it. He like He went out there and looked for work, and he found work right away. He immediately put this tackle on his back, um, even though he didn't really have to, but this is a guy who's always constantly looking for work. and. That's the physical traits that I'm telling you guys about that is very special and, and it can be uh, well translated into the NFL game. So here we go, guys. There you go. Puts him on his back. Perfect play right there. Uh, way to find work. That's 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 the way, best way I can describe it. So once again, we're looking at the left tackle position, number 55. Um, there you go. He has a guy. Uh, he's kind of like far out there. Maybe even uh, – uh, he's, he's still on a five technique, but he, he's kind of wide out there. You could argue and call it a seven. There's no tight end, but um, five technique right there. Um, put, trying to get an angle, trying to get that edge to get around him. That's what the defender is trying to do. But let's ride, let this ride out. So here we go. Initially, what we see here is that that uh, slot corner blitz through the B gap. Uh, looks like somebody missed an assignment. I don't know if it was the 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 corner or the defensive tackle. Uh, I'm gonna uh, the the defensive end or whoever that is. Um, I'm gonna assume that the corner uh, made the wrong decision because uh, later on he kind of almost does like a stunt action to get back to the outside uh, to try to blitz. So I'm gonna say that the corner missed an assignment, but just the recognition from number 55 from Fatanu. Uh, to recognize what's going on, uh, taking that inside step to prevent anything from happening um, uh, really helped him out. And just the IQ, just showing the IQ and the communication between him and his uh, his uh, left guard uh, is, is really cool to watch. So let's continue this out, right? So you get almost like a stun action. The, guard, the, the corner finally kind of goes to that, that C gap and then outside, but it's too late for him. Uh, number 55 recognized it a long time ago and and now he's stale made it so there you go now he's going back and <laughs> going back he's like i don't want no smoke i don't want no problem so there you go that was that play so this is a play right here that just shows uh elite communication great communication and um just uh just overall iq right uh, it's the little things that, that count right here in this one. It's the little things that really stick out to me in this play. Number 55 we're looking at right now. He's on the left side of the screen. Um, and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about, right? There you go. Look at this right here. He is giving the signal to, to his guard that, hey, he's trying to come out. I got him. I got him. I put my hands, put his hands on 71 on his shoulder like, don't worry. I got him. He's coming to the outside. Keep your assignment. Do your job. Stay in that inside. Uh, stay inside and, and protect that a gap, um, and, and go back and recover um, because I got this one. So just the communication right there um, was, was was good. I really enjoy. I really enjoy watching him and communicating, especially in stunts and 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 uh, a bunch of different plays. He definitely shows that high level communication and IQ. So let's see what happens right here. Uh, yep, 
extension, uses his extension um, uh, to prevent that defender from getting hands on him. The, the defender got a little bit top heavy and moved forward, and now he's just olaying him and, and laying him down for, for a nice little nap right there. So uh, nice play from Fatanu, great communication. Let's check out the next one right here. So here we go. Right here. Now he's a, and then that's that's what we're talking about shadowing a guy, right? You don't have to necessarily use um your your hands to be physical, just shadowing a guy and, and, and just doing little jabs, little strikes, little tiny strikes here and there is enough sometimes. And the fact that he has the footwork to mirror a guy, uh, a defender, um, usually these defensive ends are you know how they are these days. They run four fours, four fives, four sixes these days. So the fact that he can mirror a guy with somebody with, with, with good speed shows the level of athleticism he's bringing to the table. So I just wanted to show you guys just the, just how he's mirroring the guy. So um, great footwork from number 55 once again. So we're, on, uh, we're looking at the right-hand side of the screen, left tackle number 55 on this one, and let's check it out. Let's check it out right here. Just recognizing – that there's a stunt going on, right? Communicating with that guard and saying, I got the guy, I got this guy. I got this guy, you got the other guy. Uh, just recognizing when there's a stunt and and communicating uh, just shows, once again, his level of IQ. I've been using that a lot. High IQ guy. That's what makes me feel like he could possibly move around and play the right tackle position. He can also play the guard position. He's, he's played it before. This was tells me, that he can do multiple positions, uh, particularly go to the right side and 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 uh, and, and and bolster that side and, and strengthen that side. I think he has the IQ of doing so and the footwork to do it. He has elite footwork. I think he can make it happen, um, and he's shown it throughout all these plays. So there you go. Uh, this guy's taking a nap right there. Good footwork, good IQ, good awareness. So there you go. Here we go. It looks like we're getting almost like a. a like a, a like a not a sweep, but like almost like a power. Uh, we got the 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 tackle pulling. We got Fatanu pulling right there, um, and you'll see just his, his quickness and footwork, the ability in the second level to locate a guy and attempt to put him on his back, right here. So let, let's check this one out. And that's just good awareness as well. Good football IQ right there as well. So. He had a decision to make. He had a guy on the inside of him, and he had a guy on the complete outside. But he knows that number 72 is behind him. So if he did get the guy on the outside, um, on the inside, like kind of closer towards the hashes, um, that play would be stopped for a minimal gain. Uh, instead, he goes to the guy on the outside, and he lets 72 take the guy closer to the hash which stretches the play out and gets almost about 10 yards on this one. This play was initiated and made by number 55 on this one, just for the awareness and football IQ once again. And uh, there you go. Uh, let's, let's let this ride out right there. Two blocks staying on his man and pancake action guys. This is a guy second level locating the guy and, and staying with his guy committing to the block staying with intensity and 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 ferociousness and showing that he he can definitely um move down the field excellent excellent play good awareness good football iq there we go let's let's see the next one right here oh more stun action guys that's another one i'm talking about committing and staying to his guy right there uh, even after the quarterback uh supposed to get rid of the ball uh, he stuck with it. Um, excellent play right there. Just want to show you his awareness as far as uh, recognizing the stunt and sticking with his guy uh, for longer than what needed to be uh, needed to be done. Um, usually, uh, those left tackles, even just 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 tackles, guards, anybody would eventually stop blocking after three or four seconds, thinking the ball's out, and then uh, the quarterback gets sat, sacked in the process. So. Uh, way to stick with it, uh, play whistle to whistle. Um, just the intensity and it, uh, what he brings to the table uh, is 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 impressive. So let's see this next one right here. 55, left-hand side of the screen, left tackle. Here we go. 
sees the blitz, immediately ta attacks the blitz, right? Taking that inside step. And and, and that, that linebacker thinks he has daylight right here because, you know, he, he sees that, oh, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm about to hit this gap real quick. Nobody's going to get me. So, but number 55 takes an excellent angle and uses that long reach to get a hand on him. And then check this out. Boom, puts him down, washes him out. And now he's going out to seek more blood in uh in in a in a screen right here. So not only does he take the guy out on the blitz right here, now he's going downfield and, and, and making a block for about 10 yards. Um impressive, impressive play right there. Um he, so yeah, that's Fatanu in a nutshell, guys. That's uh, a special player, uh, somebody that can get the job done, um, somebody that I feel like can move to the right side, even though he hasn't played it much, can move to guard at, uh, if needed, can go to the left tackle position if Colton Miller's willing to make an executive decision and move to the right tackle spot and, and help this team out uh, because of his expertise and his versatility as well. Um you know, I think it's worth a try. I, I think it's worth a look. Now, I know I did present you guys a uh, PFF mock draft to where I moved back into the first round where we got Michael Penix, uh, where we got Fatanu at 13 and Michael Penix at 28. But and I think in a more realistic situation, it would be Michael Penix at 13 and Fatanu at number 28. And uh, and getting a trade and probably uh, having to trade less for somebody uh, for for a tackle, a versatile tackle rather than a quarterback. But you guys let me know what you think about that one. I'm Big Mike Raider, writer and contributor for Planet Raiders. This has been a long episode, but you know how I get when it comes to the trenches. I got to keep talking, man. I get long winded and I'm, thank you for bearing with me on this one. I want to hear what you guys think about this one. I'm going to get a lot of, oh, dream on, you know, this and that, blah, blah, blah. I don't care. But, you know, tell me what you guys think anyway. With that one, I'm Big Mike Raider, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. Have they ever seen another like me living giant type step in your house above my head on your ceiling climbed out of the bottomless pit to let the truth slip and slide off my tongue and swine dive off my lips no longer hold on I'm tired of applying the grip forget the fancy shiny rappers I'm supplying the gifts I feel it's only right to tell